Wow, welcome back. We are officially at week three. It is so exciting. And at the same time, that only means that there are two little weeks left before our last light the house night, which kind of blows my mind. But that's beside the point. We'll get there when we get there. Before we begin today, I just want to extend my absolute gratitude for all of you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for um, kind of speaking up and being with your small group. I'm very grateful that we're just kind of rolling with the punches. I know that they're doing this virtual thing is kind of awkward, but I'm very grateful that you are all here and we only have one week left. So let's just dive right into this week's session. We have covered being alone. We have covered um, the body of Christ and how we actively seek to continue to be members of the body of Christ. And today we are covering the topic of being accepted, diversity in the church. So what does diversity in the church even look like to you? I wanna explain what it looks like to me through a story. So in 2012, my junior year of high school, I went on a mission trip to Nicaragua with um, my church. We went to Nicaragua, we stayed there for a week, and we stayed at an orphanage that held special needs children. The group consisted of, um, I believe it was ninth graders to 12th graders, some people in college, and then adults. And within that little bubble of ourselves, everybody was different. We had different hobbies, different talents, different interests, um, different sports that we played, and just kind of everything in between. Um, we were just this huge mod podge of people, but we were brought to this place with one thing in common. And it was just wanting to participate in this awesome, fun trip. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it actually turned into finding joy in the Father's love and his acceptance of every single person that he has created. So we wake up early and we get right to work on campus. And our mission that week was to help create the Chapel Foundation. <clears throat> so there were, I believe there was some flooring done and, and like the base and the framework was done but we were coming in and we were basically cementing the floor. Let me tell you, that is not an easy task. I don't know how I, you probably wouldn't catch me doing something like that again, um, just because I wanted to, because it was a lot of work. There were a couple different stations. There were stations of people in the actual dirt pulling out big rocks that were gonna make it uneven. So they would take the big rocks and they would dump them into a pile and they would come back and get more and dump them and, and continue on doing that. There was another team actually hand mixing cement and getting ready to pour it. And while they were getting ready to pour it, there was another team, which I was a part of, who had these old paint cans and the paint cans were filled with cement, already dried cement, so they're pretty heavy. And then they had just like this huge stick on the end of it so that you could take it and drop it on the floor to even out the dirt. So here we are just like taking this can of cement and evening out this dirt floor for the cement team to come and pour it in. And then the other team would make sure that the cement was nice and even. And I think we had a little bit of more professional help on that one, but nonetheless, it was tough. It was tough. And we, we got hot and we got tired and we were sweaty and we were smelly. And at the end of the day, we couldn't care less because in between us working and, and laying these foundations and moving rocks and laying cement, we were able to play soccer with the kids. We were able to play on the swing sets with the kids and we were able to see what their life looked like in their everyday life. So some were making bracelets and rosaries and painting and some were just happy to be outside and playing with us. And in that moment, 
you could see the authentic true colors of the people as their selfishness was left behind and Christ's love was shown through them. We became the literal hands and feet of Christ, doing his work and showing love and caring for his beautiful family. It was a week of pure love and authentic love. And we all became one. We all got gross together. We all prayed together. We all worshiped together. We cried and laughed and grew and we praised our Heavenly Father. This is what diversity in the church looks like to me. And it's not just something that you find on mission trips. Absolutely not. It was just, that's what reminded me of what diversity in the church looks like. But when you think of what diversity in the church looks like at our home parish of St. Brendan's, you see many different sizes of families. You see different ages, different races, backgrounds, again, talents and interests and hobbies. And we just make this mod podge of people who are all gathered in one place for the same reason. Because they know they are loved, that they belong, and they are always accepting. Think about the diversity in Lighthouse. You guys walk through those doors every week and we may not know each other as well as we would hope to, but I'm sure we don't have every single thing in common. I know that many of you probably have many different talents and the list could go on and on from how we are different, but we are accepted as one thing in common. And that is a daughter or son of the most beautiful father that we could ever ask for. So when we think of just those who make up Lighthouse, think about how many different talents God has gifted us with to make us who we are. Maybe you are musically talented. Maybe it's something related to sports. Maybe you are an excellent advisor to your friends. Or maybe you're a really good listener and everything that you take in becomes your prayer. Whatever it may be, God has given you a gift. Something that uniquely defines who you are. But at the end of the day, we all come together to glorify our God, a Father who has plans for each and every one of us. He uses all our differences to be his hands and feet here on earth. And we are beautiful together. And we do amazing things when we come together. I actually want to read you a verse, which kind of brings me to my next point um, of being different, but one at the same time. So we're going to dive into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 26. And it says, As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, who would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary, and those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with great honor, and our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body, 
as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. So what a beautiful verse to kind of digest tonight. And maybe you read it over again in your small groups. But diversity in our church is huge. We are filled with different backgrounds, family lives, nationalities, and just about everything else in between. But just as we cannot say that one of us is not part of the body, we are connected through the Spirit and through Christ alone. We put everything aside to belong and to be accepted into the church and become part of the body of Christ. When we are part of our church community, we belong. We are never alone. We continuously seek to grow and be a part of the body of Christ through the Eucharist, and we are always accepted. Again, before we head out, I would just like to end in a quick closing prayer. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, thank you for accepting us just the way we are. Thank you for letting us know that we belong in your church, that we are always part of your church in this faith community, and that we always have a place at home with our parish and with Lighthouse. Let me never end pursuing you in a deeper relationship with you. Let me see you in my everyday acts. Let me be more selfless and become the hands and feet of you on this earth today. Help me to love and accept as you do and guide me into a relationship that just goes deeper with you and our faith. Thank you for your endless blessings that you give us and continue to protect us and watch over us and all who need you during this time. We pray this and for all the intentions of our hearts. In your name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Um, again, I hope you guys have a great small group. I won't see you next week, but we will see you May 17th. And I'll talk to you later.